Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and today I wanted to share some recent favorites of mine from TV shows to movies to miscellaneous items in my life that I have fallen in love with. Let's get right into it and let's start with the TV shows that I have been watching lately and I've fallen head over heels for. The first show that I want to talk about is The Boys. The Boys is a darker take on the traditional superhero story. We follow a group of superheroes called The Seven and they are a very famous, well-known group of superheroes who always saves the day. But have a darker past that the public doesn't know about. And then we follow the boys who are a group of humans who don't have any powers, who are fed up with the seven and the crimes that they have committed against their loved ones, and they decide to try and take out every one of the seven. So we follow not only the boys but the seven as they are working on their marketing and they are trying to save the day but are also incredibly terrible people. And then we follow the boys as we delve deeper into their past, we watch them form their group, and we watch them try and take out the seven. The Boys is not for the faint of heart. It is incredibly violent and gruesome and really plays into the darker aspects of what it's like to be a superhero. It flips all the traditional DC heroes on their head and creates this very dark and terrible group of the seven heroes who just rage over the world and use their powers not only for good but incredibly evil acts. It is so well done. The cinematography is great. The acting is superb. The actor who plays Homelander absolutely deserves an Emmy for his work. He's one of my favorite characters and actors on television. I think his work is just superb and the way that you can analyze Homelander in so many different ways is amazing and he's the perfect villain that I wish Marvel would have but Marvel in my opinion always has really weak villains and Homelander is the perfect villain in The Boys. Highly recommend it. It is so on the nose but very subliminal with their messaging and their references to actual events that happened in real life and I just one of my favorite shows of all time now. I cannot get enough of the boys. The next show that I want to talk about is The Rings of Power. The Rings of Power is a new show also on Amazon exploring the world before The Lord of the Rings and as someone who has not read The Lord of the Rings yet or any of the other companion novels besides The Hobbit, I have fallen head over heels in love with The Rings of Power. Mostly because I don't have anything to compare it to. A lot of people are very angry about the lore and the timeline but for me I am enjoying The Rings of Power for everything that it is. I love the the absolutely beautiful setting and the different characters, costumes, and the world that we're exploring as we slowly see the rise of Sauron and the Rings of Power. My favorite character in the show has to be Galadriel and also Arondir. I feel like I'm saying their names wrong because I don't have that pretty like elvish accent, but they are two of the most fascinating characters and I'm falling in love with Middle Earth all over again. Even though it's very different from the Lord of the Rings movies, it still has the heart of the Lord of the Rings. It feels very magical and beautiful and it also explores so many different lands and characters. We follow Harfoots, we follow elves, we follow humans, and we follow the orcs that are being created and are taking over Middle Earth. There are so many different ways you can explore the Rings of Power and I am enjoying every single aspect of it. I have no complaints. Yes, a couple of episodes are a little bit boring, but I feel like they're building the world and something great is going to come out of it. So I am a very easy to please fan and I am in love with the Rings of Power. Another fantasy show that I have fallen in love with is The House of the Dragon. Yes, I am roped into yet another Game of Thrones show. After seeing Game of Thrones end and saying I am done with that franchise forever, The House of the Dragon came out and I was sucked in. The House of the Dragon hits different than Game of Thrones and I think I enjoy it more than Game of Thrones because there's not an over and gratuitous amount of violence. It's a very dramatic show. It's a lot of gossip and longing stares and secrets and blackmail and it's the fun of Game of Thrones Thrones without all the violence of Game of Thrones. Yes, it's still a violent show with a lot of different things that I can pick apart and complain about, but overall I greatly enjoy it more than Game of Thrones because it is so dramatic. I love a good dramatic show, I love family secrets, and I love that we are focused on this one family, the Targaryens, and we are watching their family and their kingdom crumble slowly but surely. And I'm also really excited to see how it's going to progress with the generations. Every time Sunday comes around, I am so excited for House of the Dragon, and it really reminds me of that excitement 
that I had when I was watching Game of Thrones without all the violence and the gore of Game of Thrones that was not needed. Another show that is very different from The Boys, The Rings of Power, and The House of the Dragon is Abbott Elementary. Abbott Elementary is my new comfort show, my show that I look forward to whenever I want to sit down and watch something lighthearted. It follows a group of teachers in Philadelphia as they are trying to make it through the school year, and it's very office-like in the way that they talk to the camera, they give these really funny stares, and it's just so relatable as a child of a teacher, and I know the struggles that my mom had to go through as a teacher, so witnessing that and the relatable aspects of what it's like to grow up in elementary school in American education, I just love Abbott Elementary so much. It is so fun, so lighthearted, and is the perfect comedy for me because I'm very picky with comedy shows, but this just hits my comedic bone and is one of my new comfort shows now. Another new comfort show of mine is Ghost Files. If you do not know, Shane and Ryan from BuzzFeed Unsolved created their own network on YouTube called Watcher, and they created a new show called Ghost Files. It's very similar to BuzzFeed Unsolved, but it is so much longer and so much more well produced, and it's just the perfect show for spooky time. Shane and Ryan feel like best friends to me at this point. I have watched so many of their shows and watching their comedy really thrive in this very spooky setting while also investigating whether or not ghosts are real is the perfect show that I want every single person to watch. I love their humor and their banter and it reminds me of my best friend Sarah because Sarah is a Bugara, I'm a Shaniac, and the way that Shane and Ryan act reminds me a lot of us. So watching this show is just just so fun, so comforting. It really reminds me of the BuzzFeed days when I watched it in college, and I am just so proud of them for creating the show and getting the popularity that they deserve. They are such hard workers. It is such a fun show on YouTube. I'll be sure to link the Watcher channel down below so you can check out all their videos because they have so many great shows that you have to check out. Now let's move on to movies. I only have one new favorite movie, and it is The Fantastic Mr. Fox, and that is by Wes Anderson, and it's just such an autumnal, cozy, beautifully shot animated movie that I fell head over heels for. Fantastic Mr. Fox follows a fox who is trying to sabotage these three factories that lives by the tree that he lives in, and he does sabotage these factories, but then the owners try and go after Mr. Fox and his family and his community, and it's just a very rambunctious, very light-hearted movie that is the perfect movie to get you into the autumnal season. It has such a beautiful hue to it that's very consistent throughout every single scene. And the way that it's shot and directed is so Wes Anderson. It was my first introduction to his movies and I fell completely in love with it. It will put you right into the spirit of Halloween and October and I cannot recommend it enough. I want more people to see it. Speaking of movies, I also became an AMC A-lister. So you pay around $20 a month and you can see up to three movies a week in the AMC theaters. And I strategically got this in September and I'm probably going to cancel it around January because I want to see every single movie that's going to be nominated for an Oscar and during the Oscar season a new movie comes out every single week that I definitely want to see. So this is the perfect time to get the AMC A-lister membership to watch tons of movies that come out during this season and once January rolls around the movies really slow down and the movies that come out during that season aren't my favorite so I knew I wanted to keep this membership for around three months because I'm probably not going to use it all year round. It's probably always going to be a yearly thing where I get it around the fall and winter time because that's when the best movies come out in my opinion. So I am so excited to watch countless movies from now until when I eventually cancel it. I have already seen Don't Worry Darling. I've already seen The Invitation, and while those aren't my favorite movies of all time, I don't mind because I am an AMC A-lister, and it's a great system, and I'm really enjoying it, and I can't wait to see more movies, recommend them to you, share them on TikTok and Instagram, and review more movies on my profiles because I definitely do want to share more recommendations and my thoughts about movies with you in the future. Now let's get into the miscellaneous items that I have been loving and I want to share with you. Let's start with clothing. 
So I have two clothing items that I have been loving and one is a brown mock turtleneck sweater that I got from H&M. I have been really loving the earth tones lately and I have been wanting to kind of transition my closet into being exclusively earth tones mostly because I think it looks pretty on me and if I have the same color scheme for all my clothes they're very easy to mix and match and finding the perfect brown turtleneck for the fall season is exactly what I wanted. It fits me so well. I actually created a reel featuring it that I will share down below in my description and I just love it. It's cozy. It's not too thick. It's not too thin. It's cropped. You can mix and match it with so many different things and I am just really happy that I'm finally finding my style and my style is earth tones, things without a lot of patterns, and this turtleneck is definitely going to contribute to that look that I'm trying to go for. The next clothing item goes against everything that I just said about trying to be an earth tone queen, and it is my graphic tee of Patrick Bateman from American Psycho, one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I spontaneously got this t-shirt after watching a TikTok of my friend Allie's outfit where they were wearing a Scream shirt, I believe, and I thought to myself, I really want to have my own horror movie t-shirt that is one of my favorite horror movies because I don't necessarily like Scream but I wanted to get one for American Psycho because it's one of my favorite movies of all time. So I got this Patrick Bateman t-shirt off of Etsy and there are so many different ones that you can get for different villains and characters. It's very in trend right now and I wear it with bike shorts and it's the comfiest, coziest t-shirt that is in my collection now. I'm trying to go for this soft horror movie girl aesthetic where I have these spooky t-shirts that I can wear with bike shorts or I can tuck into jeans like the t-shirt that I'm wearing right now has a skull and I tucked it into mom jeans and I just love it. I love the dark aesthetic that really juxtaposes with my old Hollywood vintage vibe that I'm also going for but you should never be tied down to one aesthetic. If you want to be a horror movie girly one day and then an old Hollywood queen the other day. You do you. You can have multiple aesthetics. You are not tied to just one. It just got very dark while I was saying that, which really matches the horror movie girly aesthetic. Everyone who is obsessed with horror should get a t-shirt with their favorite horror movie on it because I feel like that's a staple in a wardrobe. I feel like everyone needs that in their life if you're a horror movie fan. The next thing that I have been loving and using constantly is my Bones Coffee Cinnamon Bun flavored coffee. I worked with Bones Coffee over on my Instagram and they sent over two coffees for me to try, their decaf coffee and their cinnamon bun flavored coffee, and I fell head over heels for this coffee. It smells so good and tastes even better and it doesn't give me the jitters or upsets my stomach in the way that other coffees do. I have used this constantly throughout the month and I just want to get even more from them because they have a ton of unique flavors. This is not an ad. I just really wanted to mention them in my favorites video and I do have an affiliate link code that I will put down below so you can get a discount off your order and I also receive a commission off of each order and I just also really love their design. It also matches like my skull aesthetic that I'm going for. I love it. They are really good, really fun to work with, and definitely had to mention that to give you a coffee recommendation. The last thing that I wanted to show you for this video is my new plant that has been on my wish list for the longest time, and it is a Tanique rubber plant, which has this glitchy effect on its leaves. I have been eyeing this plant for months upon months and came across it at the New York Botanical Garden and didn't get it and it haunted me that I didn't get it. So my best friend got me a technique for myself and I named it Loki and it is one of the easiest plants to take care of and it has grown so many new leaves since moving into my house and I just love the look of it. This is also a great beginner plant because rubber plants are very forgiving. You can neglect it, you can forget to water it and they will not die. They're very easy to take care of, but I also recommend using the app Planta, which you can log in your plants, your location, so it knows the temperature of your area, and it will tell you based off of those conditions where you place the plant in your house, when to water your plants, and I use that app every single day to figure out when to water my plants, and I never overwater them now, and it is the perfect app if you are a very forgetful person like me, because it will remind you every single day of which plant to water, 
and that is the end of my favorites video. I recommended a lot of shows, I showed you some random objects that I have been loving lately. Let me know if you have watched any of the shows that I have spoken about. I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Let me know if you are also a horror movie fan and what are some of your favorite horror movies so I can add them to my watch list. If you have made it this far in the video, leave a black heart emoji to match my horror movie girl aesthetic that I am going for. If you want to follow me anywhere else, all my social media links will be down below. Thank you so much for watching and if you have any more video ideas that you would like to see from me in the future, do let me know in the comments down below. I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!